let us solve one more numerical this is a kind of l structure is given to us there is a vertical bar there is a horizontal bar the cross section of this vertical bar will be a square of dimension 2b and 2b the length of this horizontal this length is l here one load p is acting and we have to find the stress at point a you have to find what is the total stress at point a this is the important question just see how it is important this is a gate question you can say let us define the axis first i am taking this as a z axis this is z let us say this axis is x axis and this is y axis right defining the axis is important these are the three centroidal axis this is z this is x and this axis is this is z this is y vertical axis or this is x axis or this is y axis right the thing is like this if you want to understand the bar is like this this vertical member this is z i can say this is z this is x and inside this plane this perpendicular axis is y right this is y if you write this this is y if you write this so this is y y and if you can say this is x so this is x x and this is z right you do you know how to project the axis right we have to find what is the stress is at point a the same procedure as we did in our earlier lecture the same procedure we will do we have two members that is the vertical member and we have horizontal member right vertical member and horizontal member if you want to see that for the vertical member this load is parallel to the longitudinal axis z parallel to the longitudinal axis perpendicular to this plane of cross section this is the plane of cross section it is perpendicular to this but do not pass through the longitudinal axis so it will be a eccentric if i write this is eccentric axial which load tensile load right which load tensile load why tensile because it is of tensile nature right it is a tensile load for horizontal member if you want to say that this is a horizontal member this is the plane of cross section for horizontal member this is a this load is parallel to the plane of cross section perpendicular to this longitudinal axis and passing through it so for the horizontal member this is a transverse shear load right transverse shear load as our point is on vertical member so you, we are mostly concerned with our vertical member <coughs> right and in vertical member this load is eccentric axial tensile load eccentric axial tensile load this eccentric axial tensile load will give us one axial tensile load you know this one axial tensile load that is plus p and one constant bending moment the magnitude of this constant bending moment will be p into eccentricity right and for the derivation the eccentricity will be this length the eccentricity will be this length right this length is l this is 2b half of it is b so this length is l this l minus b right this length is l minus b so bending moment will be p into l minus b right p into l minus b so if i can say solve for axial tensile load 
we are saying that this axial tensile load will give you a normal stress normal axial stress that is load per unit area it is positive why it is a tensile load so it is positive this will be equal to p upon area will be 2b into 2b so sigma a will be p upon 4b square p upon 4b square this is sigma axial and we know that for axial stress will be same at both of the fibers so i can say for this right hand side fiber this is sigma a and for left hand side fiber this is also sigma a positive because it is a tensile stress so for left hand side and right hand side both of them is sigma a that is the tensile stress let us solve for bending moment this is the condition here let us solve for constant bending moment the l minus b it will give you a bending stress the value of this will be m upon z m upon z now the question is that this m upon z will be of about which axis this m upon z will be about which axis we have to find it see this p load will bend will give you a moment p into l minus b in this plane in this plane of board so this couple p into l minus b is about a axis perpendicular to this about a axis perpendicular to this so the perpendicular to this axis is y y right this is the this this figure will be like this so y is the axis perpendicular to the plane of paper so this is m y and this is z y y this is important thing you have to learn which axis you have to take for moment of inertia this is a simple case because this is your square so moment of inertia about x axis and y axis is same in this case but there may be a case when he will give you a rectangle then moment of inertia about two axis will be different right one is bd cube upon 12 another is db cube upon 12 this is a square section that's why it is immaterial but still you have to learn how to take the section here which either yy or zz or xx you have to text you have to choose it wisely so i can write here this is this will be equal to what is the bending moment p into l minus b divided by moment of inertia about y axis upon y max this is equal to p into l minus b moment of inertia about y axis is a raised to power 4 that is 2b 2b raised to power 4 upon 12 you know this divided by y max will be 2b by 2 that is b right y max will be this b 2b divided by 2b so it will give you the sigma b this is the bending stress you will get now you know that the bending stress will be your one at one fiber it will be your tensile at one fiber it will be the compressive and from our shortcut we know that during eccentric axial loading this is eccentric axial loading for vertical member so during eccentric axial loading the fiber which is near to the point of application of load has maximum stress so in this case this right hand side fiber will be close to this point so here the stress will be maximum so if sigma a is tensile then sigma b will be tensile here to maximize its magnitude and here it is minus sigma b here it is minus sigma b so the stress at point a if you want to calculate at point a will be sigma at point a will be equal to sigma a plus sigma b 
right sigma a plus sigma b put the value after solving this this will be the answer this will be your answer sigma a plus sigma b right you can solve like this this is a gate 2008 question so you can solve it very easily with the help of your basic understanding of axial loading and eccentric axial loading let us solve one more numerical on the load chapter we have this kind of a structure this kind of a structure is given in which three beams are attached with each other this is your first beam <coughs> this is your second beam and this is your third structure the cross section of this structure is given in this diagram it is a rectangle the width is b and the depth is d and this is the this line is the longitudinal axis of member 1 and 3 right this line which is at a distance of d by 2 this distance is d by 2 so this is the longitudinal axis of the member 1 and 3 right and you can say this is the if you can say this is x axis this is the longitudinal axis of member 2 and if I show it in the cross section this line is the centroidal axis of your member 2 and this distance is d by 4 right this length is d by 2 so this length will be d by 4 we have applied a external load p from this direction and from this axis a load p is here applied we have to find what is the maximum stress induced at this section right what is the maximum stress induced at this section so let us say that we have three members first is your member one member one for member one this load p is a axial load right why axial load the load is perpendicular to the cross section passing through this longitudinal axis so this load p is a axial load for the member one for your member two for this member two this load is a eccentric eccentric axial tensile load right why eccentric axial tensile load the load is perpendicular to cross section parallel to this longitudinal axis but do not pass through it so it is a eccentric axial and tensile load for member 3 if I can say for member 3 it is a again axial load for member 3 also it is an axial load because this is the member 3 it is passing through the longitudinal axis parallel to it so it is a axial load we have to find the maximum stress at your section xx and section x is your this section is on the member 2 so we are only considering for your member 2 right for only member 2 we are taking effect your consideration because we have to find what is the stress at this section and this section is present on your member 2 so we are only concerned about your member 2 so for member 2 this is a eccentric axial tensile load and we know that one eccentric axial tensile load will be equal to first axial tensile load axial tensile load whose magnitude is plus p and second is your constant bending moment right one axial load is equal to one eccentric axial load is equal to one axial load and one constant bending moment and the magnitude of this bending moment will be load into eccentricity and eccentricity will be your d by 4 this 
this will be your eccentricity that is d by 4 so the bending moment will be p into d by 4 right bending moment will be p into d by 4 so let us solve for axial load right axial load will give you the axial stress which axial stress which axial stress the tensile axial stress and the this formula will be load per unit area of the section 2 this will be p upon area cross section area of this section 2 is width is same b and this height is d by 2 so this is b into d by 2 so you can write here your axial load will be equal to 2p upon bd the axial load will be equal to 2p upon bd and you know that the axial load will be constant so on the both top and bottom fiber the axial load will be same or axial stress will be same so it is plus sigma a and it is also plus sigma a on top and on bottom fiber sigma will be same because of your axial load that is sigma a because of bending if you solve for bending moment if i write here for your bending moment the magnitude of bending moment is p into d by 4 right so it will give you a bending stress that is a normal stress the magnitude of this will be m upon z m upon z and this z is about you need to know what is the axis of this z is or uh, axis of this couple is this p and this p2 will be here this will give you a couple in this plane of board right this will give you a couple bending couple in this plane of board so the axis will be this axis that is your let us say this axis suppose this is z axis suppose this is z axis right so the bending moment will be around z axis right this is your if you can say right this is the member this is z axis which i can show here this is the z i am saying x y and z so this z axis is there so i can say this bending moment is in this front plane right so the this bending couple will be along this axis that is z axis and this is z this is z this is y this is x right <coughs> If axis you want to know, this is y axis, this is z and this is x axis, right? This is x axis. So, this is m upon z about z axis. This will be equal to p into d by 4 upon moment of inertia about z axis divided by y max. So, bending stress will be equal to P into D by 4 divided by moment of inertia of this section about Z axis, this axis. We know that the axis which the dimension which is cut by this axis will be raised to power 3. You know this will be raised to power 3. So, that the moment of inertia of this section we have to take for this section right the cross section of this section will be d by 2 and b so moment of inertia about this z axis will be b d cube by 12 then the dimension cut by this axis is d by 2 so you can write the moment of inertia is b into d by 2 raised to power 3 divided by 12 divided by 12 this is izz upon y max y max will be this d by 4 so this is d by 4 right this is d by 4 so if you solve this this will be pd by 4 divided by this is bd cube upon this is 8 and this is 12 
So this is 12 into 8, right, divided by d by 4, divided by d by 4. So this bending stress will be equal to, you have to solve this, this relation you have to solve, this is d by 4. So it will be, you can write this d by 4 as like this, 4 upon d, right, you can write this like this, this will be your into 2 and this is square, right, you can write like this, this d will be gone, d cube will be gone, so if you solve this, this will be pd upon 4 into 12 into 2 upon bd square this will be equal to 4 3 6 d d square this is 6 p upon bd 6 p upon bd right this is 6 p upon bd now this is the bending stress and we know that the bending stress will be your one is at one fiber it will be tensile at one fiber it will be compressive so we know that during the eccentric axial loading the fiber which is near to the point of application of load has maximum stress so this is the load this is the load so the top fiber will be at maximum stress because the top fiber will be near to the load so if this is sigma a to maximize its magnitude you have to add plus sigma b here so here it will be minus sigma b here it will be your minus sigma b so maximum stress maximum stress at section xx will be sigma a plus sigma b so you can write your maximum sigma at your xx will be 8p upon bd 8p upon bd you just add it 6 plus 2 will be 8 so 8p upon bd this is how you can solve this you can also try this question for the maximum try that right you can also change this question like that what is the maximum stress induced in the figure in the member 1 2 and 3 if this load p is acting here at this axis just try once this question when load p is acting at this point what is the maximum value of stress induced at section 1 2 and 3 right this is how you can solve this type of question let us solve one more numerical on your load chapter the numerical says that for the column as shown in this figure we have to determine what is the maximum value of eccentricity such that there is no tensile stress induced in this column right we have a circular column of diameter d column column is a that vertical structure member which is under the compressive load right if in any structural member if you apply a compressive load then it is a column right so we want to know what is the maximum value of this eccentricity e so that there is no tensile stress induced in this column i am saying this is the longitudinal axis of the column and these are the your centroidal axis in the plane of cross section right so we can say that let us solve for this we can say that the load p is a eccentric axial compressive load for column right because this is parallel to the longitudinal axis do not pass through it so it is a eccentric axial load and it is of compressive nature so it is eccentric axial compressive load that is equal to 1 axial load that is of magnitude minus p 
Why minus? Because it is a compressive. And second one is your constant bending moment. The magnitude of that constant bending moment will be m will be equal to your p into e. Right. Bending moment will be p into e. These two loads are acting on this column because of one eccentric axial compressive load. Right. So let us solve for this axial load first. I am taking axial load. So because of this axial load, one axial stress is developed. The value of this will be P into P upon A. Load upon area. And this will be equal to load upon area of cross section is pi by 4 d square. So you can say that axial stress is your 4 p upon pi d square. Right. Axial stress will be 4 p upon pi d square. And we can say this is a compressive stress because it is a compressive load. So, because of axial stress, we can say on the right hand side of fiber and on the left hand side of fiber, the axial stress will be same. So, it is minus sigma A and here also it is minus sigma A. Minus because it is compressive in nature. This is for axial load. Now, let us solve for your bending. Second one is your bending. So, we have a constant bending moment the magnitude of that is equal to p into e and it will give us a bending stress which is also a normal stress the value of bending stress will be m upon z m upon section modulus and about which axis if you write let this is the z axis this is your y axis and this was your x-axis as per our convention. This is our x-axis and this vertical axis is y. Right. So, this load P will give you a bending moment in this plane of board. Right. So, this couple will be about the axis perpendicular to this board and perpendicular to this board axis is x-axis. So, it will be around x-axis. So that is equal to bending moment is P into E upon this is moment of inertia about X axis upon Y max. This is equal to P into E upon what is the moment of inertia for circle is pi by 64 D raised to power 4 pi by 64 D raised to power 4 divided by D by 2. Y max is this D by 2. So from here you can write that bending stress will be equal to P into E. This is pi by 32 d raised to power 3. Right. If you solve this, it is pi by 32 d raised to power 3. So I can write it like this. This will be equal to 32 P E upon pi d 3. This will be your bending stress, right? This up to this we know how to solve this. We did a lot of numericals how to calculate bending stress and normal stress in case of axial loading. So we can say that during an eccentric axial load, the fiber which is close to the point of application of eccentric axial load has maximum stress and the point which is far away from the point of application of load has your minimum stress so we can say that the load this load is acting at this point so this fiber this right hand side fiber is the near to the point of application of load so i can say that at this point at this fiber the stress would be maximum so if it is minus sigma a to make it maximum to make the magnitude maximum i have to add minus sigma b so if it is minus sigma b, so it is plus sigma b. Right, this I know how to solve it. So you can say that the right hand side fiber 
हैज टोटल स्ट्रेस माइनस सिग्मा ए माइनस सिग्मा बी एंड द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड फाइबर हैज द स्ट्रेस माइनस सिग्मा ए प्लस सिग्मा बी राइट वी हैव टू फाइबर्स राइट हैंड साइड लेफ्ट हैंड साइड फाइबर हेयर द स्ट्रेस इज माइनस सिग्मा ए माइनस सिग्मा बी एंड हेयर द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड फाइबर हैज द स्ट्रेस ऑफ माइनस सिग्मा ए प्लस सिग्मा बी सो इफ यू कैन सी दिस देन दिस वैल्यू इज ऑलवेज नेगेटिव दिस इज ऑलवेज नेगेटिव और यू कैन से दिस इज ऑलवेज कंप्रेसिव बिकॉज दिस इज माइनस माइनस सो इट विल बी माइनस सो वी हैव नो इश्यू विद दिस बिकॉज इन द क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू से दैट दैट देर इज नो टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस इंड्यूस्ड इन द कॉलम सो ऑन दिस लेफ्ट राइट हैंड साइड फाइबर नेवर विल बी द केस वेन द योर स्ट्रेस इज टेंसाइल बिकॉज दिस मैग्नीट्यूड इज ऑलवेज नेगेटिव दिस वैल्यू इज मे बी नेगेटिव मे बी पॉजिटिव If the magnitude of this sigma b is more than the magnitude of sigma a, then this quantity will be positive. If the magnitude of sigma a is more than the sigma b, then this value will be negative, right? So this this case may be you are compressive or it may be tensile. it may be tensile but we don't want tensile so we can say that the value of minus sigma a plus sigma b should always be less than equal to 0 we want this we want this quantity should always be negative then only we can say that in this member there is no case that there will be a tensile stress at this point also compressive and at this point also compressive so we can say that this minus sigma a plus sigma b should be less than equal to 0 what is the value of sigma a is 4p upon pi d square plus what is the value of sigma b <coughs> sigma b is you are 32 pe upon pi d cube pe upon pi d cube this is minus so i am writing the sign minus should be less than equal to 0 should be less than equal to 0 so from here i can write 32 pe upon pi d cube i take this on this side less than equal to 4p upon pi d square 4p upon pi d square if you solve for this this p will cancel pi will cancel this is square will cancel with this 3 so if you see this then e should be less than equal to d upon this is 4 32 8 d upon 8 you will get that the value of eccentricity if the value of eccentricity will be less than or equal to d by 8 then there is no case that a tensile stress is developed in this case why you don't want a tensile stress because this is a column and under the axial compressive loading your brittle materials are weak in tension right if you can say that in your uh, when you are making any building or anything then you are using the columns right to support the roof to support the weights but we don't want that this column will fail so this column will fail only in tension the columns or you can say brittle materials are very strong in compression they are very strong in compression but they are very weak in tension if on any brittle material you apply a tension load it will fail very easily so we don't want that in a column that we don't want there may be a case of your tensile stress we don't want that in any column tensile stress is induced that's why we say if the eccentricity is less than or equal to d by 8 then you will say that the stress is induced in that column will always be of compressive nature so the maximum value of eccentricity you can afford 
द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ इसेंट्रिसिटी यू कैन अफोर्ड इज डी बाय एट द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ इसेंट्रिसिटी यू कैन अफोर्ड इज डी बाय एट सो फ्रॉम जीरो टू डी बाय एट वैल्यू यू कैन अप्लाई लोड सो वेन यू आर डिजाइनिंग दट कॉलम और वेन यू आर वेन यू आर अप्लाइड लोड्स ऑन ए कॉलम देन यू विल ऑलवेज बी इन केयर दैट दैट द लोड विल बी विद इन दिस रेंज फ्रॉम जीरो टू डी बाय एट इफ द लोड इज आउटसाइड दिस डी बाय एट रेंज इफ यू से इफ यू मेक लोड इन डी बाय सिक्स इज सेंट्रिसिटी लेटर से और डी बाय फोर इज सेंट्रिसिटी right then tensile stress will induce and this column will be uh, there will be a chance that this column will fail right so we are only we always take care that the in columns that is load will be from 0 to d by 8 value in between this 0 to d by 8 so that there should not be any failure right so if i can say what is the what is if you can say here that what is the theoretical maximum eccentricity theoretical maximum eccentricity is d by 2 right maximum you can write you can maximum you can apply load at this point this eccentricity is d by 2 this is d so this is d by 2 so theoretical maximum eccentricity is your d by 2 right theoretical maximum eccentricity is d by 2 so if i can write your maximum eccentricity upon theoretical maximum eccentricity it will be equal to 1 by 4 it will be equal to 1 by 4 so this is known as 1 by 4th middle rule right 1 by 4th middle rule so we always take care that the load will be in the that area which is from 0 to d by 8 so if i can write here that suppose we have a section if i if i can see right we'll rub this let us take the cross section of this load or of this column this column is a circular cross section this column is a circular cross section these are the axes let us say these are the axes right this is the axis so i am saying that this distance is d by 2 d by 2 radius is d by 2 and we can make eccentricity up to d by 8 suppose this point is at d by 8 this is d by 8 d by 8 so if i draw a circle at a radius of d by 8 suppose this is a circle whose radius is d by 8 the red circle radius is d by 8 and the black one circle radius is d by 2 right d by 2 so then you will get this area from radius 0 to d by 8 this the point on this circle at each and every point on this circle is at a radius of d by 8 so you you always wants that the stress in the column will or you can say that when you applied load in a column that load will exist only in this area only in this area if you applied load here like this if you applied load here like this then because of this load tensile stress will develop and column will fail so always the load must be within this area at any point you can apply load like this right then the tens then the stress is developed inside the column will be compressive only no tensile stress will develop so this is known as this is known as core or kernel of a column core or kernel of a column core or kernel of a column means there should not be any tensile stress if you applied load within this area 
कोर ऑफ द कॉलम मीन्स इफ यू अप्लाइड एनी कंप्रेसिव लोड ऑन दिस एरिया इन दिस डायरेक्शन विद इन दिस रेड एरिया और शेडिड एरिया देयर शुड नॉट बी एनी टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस विल डेवलप राइट If I can say here that what is the core area? Area of core will be pi by four into d square. D d is d by four square. Radius is d by two. So the so radius is d by eight. So the diameter is d by four. So it will be equal to it will be equal to pi by four d square. Into one by sixteen. Into one by sixteen. This is area of cross section pi by four d square. So you can write area of core will be equal to one by sixteen area of cross section. Area of core will be equal to one by sixteen times area of cross section. So if you apply load on this area within this area. then there should not be any tensile stress developed in the system suppose this e is d by 8 and let us say this is d by 8 let us say right just for your better understanding i am doing this suppose this is the column and this point is d by 8 this point is d by 8 so you can apply load on in between these points only in between these points only you can apply load compressive load then only there is no tensile stress develop if you apply load outside this range if you apply load outside this range like this like this blue color then there should there there should be a tensile stress develop and your column will be prone to failure right this is the concept of core and col column so you need to know where you can apply the load so that this column will not fail and that area is known as core or the kernel of the column